Uh, greetings, madam. So my name is Iman. My metric number is one five zero two two four. And right now, I'm going to portray how art as a movement had been influenced by the world chaos, such as the Great Depression era, World War One, World War Two. And here we see a painting made by Edward Moran, 1874, where a man is depicted as the dominating figure in a natural landscape. And so the large expanse of the sky it conveys a feeling of freedom and spirituality, and the soft light it sheds a veil of calm. There are no straight lines or harsh shadows here. And as we can see, the man-made life is just hinted at a tiny fraction of the landscape. The figure of the man is raised above his animals and the line of the horizon, emphasizing the sense of dominance, influence and control. He is engaged in a meaningful work in harmony with his environment. This is another painting made in 1893 and in this painting we see a bright moon illuminates a dark sky and nothing threatens. The sea is calm and the man is comforted in his experience and knowledge as symbolized by the light he carries. His close following companion is the very emblem of trust and fidelity. Here now is a painting by Thomas Hovenden, 1890, a family group. The lad, gawky and awkward, is the tallest person in the room. He has outgrown the family. He looks a little bit embarrassed at how his mother is fussing over him and perhaps a bit nervous or anxious to be on his way as he grips his hat. The older sister, seated on the left, controls her feeling by stroking the family dog, which almost seems to be aware of the solemnity of the occasion. The grandmother on the right looks steely-eyed and tight-lipped at the mother and son having their moment. She has seen all this before. The father faces the door with his back turned he is probably anxious to get this emotional woman's moment over with. The mournful look, the gesture of leaning against the doorframe, portrays that the younger sister is at a great loss with this brother's departure. All in all, these are human interactions. So now that we've seen how the painting atmosphere was like before the chaos, I'm going to show what it was like after the chaos. This is Edward Hopper, a calm and deliberate painter who keeps his canvas detailed, organized, clean, smooth, accurate to every degree, with his characters isolated. And it pulls us back to one degree into depictions slightly more general and detached from place, history and person. In this way, there's just enough room to put our own lives into Hopper's works. And once inside, it's impossible not to be closed in and see that life along his themes. Themes that are present but unspoken of in some parts of our lives. Themes called loneliness, alienation, voyeurism, and quiet contemplation. It's worth noting that the atmosphere Harper was in had influence to his expressions, say the bombing of the Pearl Harbor. Following the weeks and days of the incident, everyone in New York City was paranoid for another attack. The city held blackout drills, a way to practice hiding the city in darkness if an aerial assault ever came. But Hopper didn't take any interest in the very prospect of being bombed. This is Nighthawk, a painting that was done following the weeks and days of the bombing of the Pearl Harbor, 1942. 
the scene depicts four people at a diner at night. There is one waiter and three patrons whose relationships are all ambiguous. The atmosphere conveys a vast amount of quiet contemplation. The main character of the piece seems to be the diner itself, an island of light in the outer darkness. Its diagonal lines are strongly accentuated by the counter and stools. And we're seeing the diner at an art angle, and the point of that presumably was to achieve an effect where our gaze invades these private worlds, inviting that voyeuristic appearance, knowing that rooms, like people, can be penetrated. Look at these two. They're seated so closely together in a diner at night. It's as if they know each other somehow. And although their hands overlap, they don't touch. And their different faces suggest that they are strangers, if not momentarily estranged. This was the atmosphere in which Nighthawk was born. The future was very uncertain at the time, as uncertain as the darkness that frames the patrons at this diner. And for the light of the diner, that seems to be the last light still shining, it's believed that there is an optimistic reading to it. What is there to do in the face of great discomfort and doubt, but work and live on? This is Automat, done in 1927. Note that this was just a few years passing by the Great Depression era where most people were still failing to find their place in the normal world of relationships and community. And so isolated cafes were the sanctuaries for such people. Overall, we see that this is a picture of sadness, yet it is not a sad picture. We are invited to invent stories from this, like how nothing can be seen on the outside, through the large windows, just a partial reflection of the inside. And the downcast eyes of this woman it all indicates that she is only focused on her inner world, disregarding the disastrous environment of the time. Again, what is there to do in the face of great discomfort and doubt than to work and live on?